Welcome Chargeback Army to Chargeback Board. We got Terrence, we got Mike, and we've got Super Hang On. Wow, Super Hang On, man. Super Hang On is such a cool game. Not only the arcade version of it, but also because it was part of the original Genesis lineup. It was, that's right. A lot of people forget that. Because the Genesis, when Genesis first came out, it was advertised to basically be an arcade machine at home. And so a lot of their first titles were all arcade games. Altered Beast, Golden Axe, Super Hang On, Ghouls and Ghosts. Oh, sorry. Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghouls right? And Ghosts, Did it get yeah. Super Ghouls and Ghosts? No, or that's, it just ghoul, that's just, that was just Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> even though, even though the Genesis version should have been called Super Ghouls and Ghosts, because Super, because Ghouls and Ghosts in Genesis was way better than Super Ghouls and Ghosts in Super Nintendo. I think I did a video about that when you were when you were on <laughs> hiatus. Doesn't matter. But yeah, it's, this was part of the original lineup. This was this was part of the Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Yep. This was part of the. One of the few titles that came under the umbrella of celebrity endorse, you know, um, Joe Montana football, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, Tommy Lasorda baseball, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I know there's a couple others. This was coming to head right now. But uh, yeah, I really, really like this game. I liked it for the memories um, that it gave me of the pack in title on the Master System. Master System, System right. The original Hunt, Hunt and, and Hang On. And um, I think in the uh, in the arcades too, like they arcade manufacturers had you know experimented with sit down or full fledged like full position, mm -hmm. which came out before Super Hang On was a sit down originally arcade game. But Super Hang On actually having a physical bike that you sit on and you lean and maneuver around the corners. And I that's when I first experienced it in the arcade. I think we were discussing before we were first listening to the soundtrack, but the arcade I went to had it on a little pedestal. They had to step up to to go on. It was kind of like a it was a focal focal point of the arcade because at the time I was really something special. And I always wondered, as much as I enjoyed the game, I thought, how accurate is it? Because obviously I was too young at the time to ever learn how to ride a motorcycle. And I, I still haven't learned. I know Terrence, you have been riding a motorcycle for years. But I was watching a, a Japanese show where they went to an arcade and had a hang on machine there. And their yeah, cameraman, exactly. as they advertised in Japanese, was a, a former street tough. <laughs> in Japan, a former street tough is a guy who used to ride a motorcycle, and so they get him on, and he's, and this is a fairly recent show, like the show was only a few years ago, and he's, his first, he's never played Super Hang On before, but he's been riding motorcycles, like, he gets on it, he clears, basically clears the game. So that to me was like, wow, they really nailed this. They were like, <laughs> it's like physics, yeah. <laughs> and gameplay, and approximation, that's so cool, that's great to hear, like, I, I would love, I would love to be able to play one of those sit down like you know on, yeah. the, on the motorcycle game again the last time i did it in an arcade was sega released a harley davidson game mm -hmm. i believe that was at the palladium yep. outside of toronto and mississauga so i played it there um i remember playing uh what was that game we were talking about uh yeah, suzuki this this the suzuka suzuka 24 hour yeah. i think it was called or just whatever, but that was, I remember playing that yeah. and it's so much fun, but yeah, years before I started riding motorcycle, but it doesn't even matter. Back when this came out in the arcade, this was the era that Sega, well, Sega really was pushing this concept of larger than life arcade experience. Mm -hmm. Sit in, cockpits, you had Afterburner, G Lock, you know, Super Hang On, um, even, out, Outrun. That's right, that was. Um kind of like the birth of like they were doing like their super scaler yeah. uh, games because they experimented with scaling like we take scaling for granted now and I know for the home market when Super Nintendo came out that was the big thing but before that scaling was very rarely used and it was still very difficult to do and Sega had ex experimented it with Turbo that old arcade game mm -hmm. where you know they could actually scroll graphics in and out and then they decided hey let's up it with Super Hang On. Now didn't um <clears throat> so I have a feeling especially since a lot of these games most likely would have came out of AM2, which mm -hmm. was uh, Sega's main arcade division. So when I when I see, you know, we played this, and when I looked at the graphics, I, I couldn't help but be reminded of aspects of Afterburner yep. and of Space Harrier as well. Yep. It's especially all like, that's all their Super Scalar stuff, and all Mr. Yu Suzuki, <laughs> who we will yes. definitely be talking to in future episodes. But, yes, yes, but, we, have but some, it, we have some things. Yeah, to talk about we have some things to talk about Yu Suzuki, but as a as a like a very, very brief Cliff Notes uh, introduction is uh, this man is a freaking genius and 
his beginnings, basically, or his height of, not his height of popularity, but his real push at Sega was these amazing full body type experiences in the arcade and spraying on was one of his first ones that um, that really had made his vision come to life, which then led into games like Afterburner and Outrun later on. And then it just kept on continuing. Yeah, I, was exactly, even thinking, yeah. I was even thinking of Virtual Racer as, as having mm -hmm. a little... Yep. And it's, it's that concept of um, arcade simulators. I love that. It was so much yeah. fun. Like now, now, like, you know, when you go to, a, if you're lucky enough to go to an arcade now and your, your simulator is basically you're sitting in a little enclosed theater yeah. with a big screen and that's fine. That's cool, but, but, and of course you couldn't have things like G-Lock and Afterburner and, and you know, yeah. where they have these hydraulics and the vehicles moving around because they did, they did break down a lot. Absolutely. And they must be a killer expensive to manufacture and for the arcade to, the owners to own. A lot of people don't know with arcade owners. Like, a lot of those arcade machines, they had to physically buy, you know, to put in there. And they weren't no few hundred bucks. Like, it was, Neo Geo was years away from introducing <laughs> yeah. multiple cartridges. Like, these machines were thousands of dollars in the mid-80s. And that was, you think, I'll, that's not pumping a lot of quarters to make a profit there. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure with some of those simulation rides, that's when we started to see higher denominations yeah. of quarters, <laughs> you know, or one quarter going yeah. into the machine. So, Super Hang-On, for me, is it's just a continuation of something that I really enjoyed when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I love driving games. Um, now, the only driving games that I'll play, for the most part, are older driving games. Right. Um, there's a some, there's this arcade charm about them, and, and for most part, the music, this is a great yes. example. Outrun, which, uh, surprise, surprise, if, uh, I don't know if this video is being released before or after, but we're also doing Outrun, so spoilers. <laughs> Uh, you know, like Outrun was a, another prime example. Uh, even playing at home, the original, the original Hang On, uh, Super Monaco Grand Prix, mm -hmm. the um, the well, Super Monaco Grand Prix, the sequel, Air and Senna's Super Monaco, and then Beyond the Limit. I think the name yeah, of it so was on Sega CD. Yeah, Beyond the Limit. It was called the uh, Heavenly Symphony, I think, in Japan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just, and, and then getting up to Daytona USA. And uh, one of one of my favorites, which is the original Sega Rally, like playing mm. playing that in the arcade. Ooh. I think that actually Ooh. brings up a good point in why the Super Hang On, even though it's an older game, '87, I believe, it came out. Why it's so special and why the arcades were so cool is because as good as things got for home games in terms of graphics and usability, is some there's just some things you couldn't emulate at home, like in, in the arcade, sitting on a giant bike and being around. You can't really have that in your home, at least uh, not not you know unless you're uh, a millionaire. So for uh, guys like Terrence and I in, in the mid '80s, going to an arcade machine and seeing that, that was fantastic. Yeah, you know, and even even making the decision, you know, especially these things weren't a quarter; they were more. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure they were never a quarter. Kind of looking at that, going, "Well, I can play one game of that, or I can play four games over there, right?" So you know, obviously a lesson in, in economics, yep. you know, when we're kids, but. I just love it. Like Super Hang On, it, it's not the it's not the most special game, but the reason why I love it is it fits perfectly mm -hmm. into that area, the early the early era of home console 16 bit, and then really as you're saying in the arcade, a time where we're getting some really fantastic titles coming from Sega. Sega, you know, Sega is a sad story. Once upon a time, Sega was a quite a quite a great company. Now it's you know we're we're just happy they're still around. And, uh, letting people like Chris Whitehead make great games like uh, Sonic Mania, yeah. but back then, when you looked, when you saw Sega in the arcade, you knew it meant something, and it didn't matter what it was, whether it was Golden Axe or Alpha Beast or Alien Storm or, 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 or Super Hang On or uh, Space Harrier, G Law. It didn't matter what it was. You knew since it was coming from Sega, and especially when you saw the AM2 logo as well. Yeah. You knew, and at a certain point, you discovered who Yu Suzuki was. And as you know, especially in retrospect, Yu Suzuki was the arcade primarily, and then also Sega home console version of uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. Yeah. Now, of course, different skill sets, but in terms of me thinking about great, yeah, great video game makers um, of the '80s from Japan, it's Shigeru Miyamoto. Yu Suzuki and and, and Hideo Kojima. Hideo Kojima, yeah. He, even even though he's a little he's a little too long in the tooth when it comes to <laughs> the the cinematics, but uh, great visions from these men. 
and it, and it's just it gives me a great feeling. I swear I could talk about anything from the 16-bit era because it puts it into as as you know we're still waiting for another a renaissance, if you will, mm -hmm. of gaming. But right now we're looking at the 80s and 90s as the golden point of gaming, and that's that is the reason why we focus on it as much as we do because it had so much soul and, and it was. It was the excitement was was tangible. Like like Mike, you you were the you were the guy that, that that first said the words that I heard. You know the the golden era of video games was the sixteen. Yeah, is that the sixteen bit era was the renaissance of video games? Because mm -hmm. I how they consider. I always made that comment because I was taking a lot of art classes. They always talk about how the renaissance was that was the best period of art. That's when we got like the best like all these glorious paintings. Like and I thought to myself, well, that's sixteen bit era. That's that's the glorious paintings. That that's. That's our renaissance. Yeah. yeah, and yes, there have been great games that have come out, just yeah. like there's been great works of art, you know, with, ex mm -hmm. with the exclusion of modern art, because that's just trash. <laughs> but, like, you know, there's been there's been great pieces of art um, in all mediums. And so, you know, it's to say that there's no other, there's no good video game past 16-bit, of course, is, is lunacy, because there's tons, mm -hmm. right? But it's just, a game like Super Hang On really personifies that period of history where it was literally like the sky was the limit mm -hmm. in the potential of gaming, but it was done in such a way that it, that it, it like it mattered to me. Because of, because of the arcade Sega games, got me interested into the technical aspects of hardware yeah. and the methods, you know, the methods of software that they used to create the things that they did. Now, like I used to love reading Next Generation, right? Because sometimes yeah. it got very technical. Now, I couldn't tell you what is in a PS4, and I don't care. All I knew is Mark Cerny went, hey guys, what do you want in a system? Oh, oh, okay, and then they made it. For me, I don't care. Now systems are boxes, they're kind of like PCs. Like, you know, they literally are, um, what, what was what was that failed thing they tried to do a couple of years ago where it was like, it was like consoleized PCs? Oh, Steambox. Steambox, <laughs> so like, our consoles now are Steambox, but, Back in the six, especially the 16-bit era and the 8-bit as well, there were there were very unique pieces of hardware that it was almost like video game developers were explorers. Yeah, and and leads into Super Hang On, where the arcade machines were very different dedicated hardware as well. That's where like we started getting the different like you know, model numbers and they used sort of engines for different games and whatnot. And it really was like one transition into the other. I love Super Hang On. I, yeah. I think the great thing Super Hang On is, is there's so much more to talk about it from what surrounds it and its place in that than it is the game itself. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a well-controlled, well-made racing game. So you got you got gas yeah. and brake, and then you can then you can turn left and right, and that's it. So it's a very simple control, yeah. but it gives the fun. The music's fun. The graphics are really nice, and it fits very neatly in that period of time, which is why I personally recommend. Giving uh, giving a couple of goes at Super Hang On. Get on that bike and yeah, if, if you're fortunate enough to find an oh, game machine lying around, if you're fortunate a, enough to find out, <laughs> a buy it and then B invite us. Yes, invite us to your home so we can play it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. So tell us about your Super Hang On experience if you do find one out there, or if you have a great memory of one that you found out there in Absolutely. the past. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Keep those comments coming. Smash the bell, like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Check out our brother channel, Video Game Soundtrack Review, where we do talk about the soundtrack aspect of Super Hang On. Thank you, as always, for watching. For Mike, my name is Terrence. Chargeback Army, keep it together forever. We are Chargeback Fold.